All right, guys, so we're talking biceps training. Uh, what I'm gonna do is talk you through a few major pointers that you need to take into consideration when you do this. And then as you see in the plan, I don't dictate what biceps exercises you need to do. So we'll show you a few different variations. There's some more videos below that uh, will help you choose what you should do. When it, when it all comes down to it, it's whatever you have in the gym, whatever is open and whatever you prefer the most is all that really matters when we're talking biceps training. So a couple things that are crucially important as you're training biceps. Number one is full range of motion. Too many times you see people in the gym with partial range of motion on biceps so that they can use more weight than they actually can handle. So you see them rocking back and forth with this like partial range of motion right here where they're only working the upward portion of the motion. And then once they get the arm up to this point, maybe they're throwing their elbow forward, which is another mistake that we'll cover. When you throw your elbow forward, you're getting too much work into the front of your shoulder and you're not giving your bicep the chance to fully contract and get that like really nice peak contraction at the top there. The further you bring this forward, the more you're cheating yourself. As my forearm gets perpendicular to the ground, right? I lose all tension. So if I'm here and I have lots of tension, lots of tension here, but as soon as I slide my elbow forward and let my shoulder get involved, my forearm becomes perpendicular to the ground and I lose all tension and the ability to contract my bicep fully. So by using a full range of motion from the bottom to the top with a static elbow, I'm able to get a full contraction all the way through my biceps range of motion without cheating at all with elbow movement or my shoulder coming forward at all. And then all the way at the bottom as well, I'm opening up completely because the motion starts from a completely open elbow to a completely closed elbow joint. So if you start here, you're not giving your biceps a full chance to extend, to stretch all the way down. And when we do these, this movement, it's just as important to have the eccentric portion of the movement as the concentric portion of the movement. So if I'm going down really fast or down only partially, I'm missing out on a lot of gains, especially in curls. It's important to have as long or if not longer time-wise of, uh, of the movement as the eccentric portion as you start to go down. So number one is range of motion. Number two is that concentric versus eccentric. So every time you do a biceps curl or any biceps exercise, I want you to get the contraction, the concentric portion where you're contracting the muscle, the isometric portion where I'm at the top here and it's a micro pause. So I'm up, micro pause. And then the eccentric portion down, slowly, 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 let it stretch out all the way. That's two. Number three is to lock that elbow into place like I already mentioned. So if you're letting your elbow slide, you're building momentum, right? So if I'm moving forward and backward, maybe my hips are moving with me, you're taking the movement completely away from the bicep at that point and you're throwing it into your hips, into your core, into your shoulder. We don't want any of that. So lock it in, think tight lats, tight elbows, right nice tight into your sides and just keep your elbows exactly where they started so you can get a full contraction with your bicep. Those are the three main things to consider as you're doing your biceps training. Whatever exercises you pick, that those three rules exist for every biceps exercise that you could possibly do. So that's it for biceps. Go ahead, pick your exercises and get training.